We begin this hour with thousands of people in a sticky situation in the Nevada desert. This is new CNN drone video of people who came for the normally sun-soaked Burning Man Festival, but extreme weather intervened. Uh, this video taken just a short time ago as uh, the revelers were making their way out of the Black Rock Desert in Nevada. A storm dumped two or three months worth of rain in just 24 hours. One death during the downpour is being investigated. Attendees have been bogged down in thick ankle deep mud, making driving impossible, walking a slog. They're being told to conserve water, food and fuel. Uh, but things are slowly improving. Earlier, I spoke to one woman stranded there and asked her about the conditions. Um, well, here's what it looks like on your feet. It's horrible. Um, wow. Everything is wet. Everything is muddy. But every, all of our spirits are really high. Like the previous person said, we're all kind of coming together as a community, making sure, you know, we all get packed up and break down camp safely. Everybody's eating. Everybody's got water. Everything is pr pretty good. CNN's Camila Bernal joins us now. Uh, Camila, I, I was just amazed. You probably couldn't see the video from where you're standing, but as I was talking to this woman, she picked up her foot and she showed what looked like two or three inches of thick mud st stuck to the bottom of her shoe. And I guess this is what people were dealing with in the middle of all this, but I guess uh, things are improving somewhat. Give us the latest. Well, Jim, it's still really messy and I don't have to see the video because there were so many people that I saw here walking out of the playa. Just to give you some perspective of where I am, the playa is right here behind me. And so the festival is only just a couple of miles from where I am. So throughout the day, I saw dozens and dozens of people with those cakey shoes with mud all over their bodies. The cars are covered in mud. I saw a number of RVs getting stuck behind me here in the desert. That's what you're seeing today. Today. And people are saying, look, I want to get out no matter what. The people that I talked to today told me we needed to get out for one reason or another, which is why they decided to either walk or try to get their cars here. Despite the fact that there is a shelter in place, they decided to come out. And that's what they were calling the beginning of the exodus. They say tomorrow it is going to be even worse because there's going to be more people wanting to get out because of the situation of not having maybe enough water or food. There is a lot of people who are saying, look, we're sharing, we're dividing our portions. They're all coming together to help each other. They're all very positive. Everyone that I talked to had told me that they're having a great time, that they're happy, but there was some concern about what kind of food and supplies they had for the rest of the days, depending on how long they had to be here. And of course, everyone that I talked to today telling me that it was very difficult to walk out of the festival. Here's one of those attendees and what she told me. It's quite expansive out there and it probably took me three hours of slogging to to walk just from my camp to the road and I did get a little bit of a hitchhike into in the back of someone's truck but uh, yeah it's just really thick dense mud so wherever it's wet it's just heavy and sticky and it's a real sloppy mess out there. <laughs> Most everything's turned off, but there's still some people partying. <laughs> And it's not easy. Like she said, it's a sloppy mess, but there's still hundreds and thousands of people that are in the playa that are here behind me, just miles away, dealing with that mud still. Again, they're all very positive and saying they're in a good mood and trying to make the best out of the situation. Unfortunately, there was one death reported. They said authorities saying that they found one individual in the playa. They did not give specific as to what happened exactly when or what was the cause of death, but authorities did say they reached out to the family uh, to let them know. Uh, but again, this is a community coming together and saying that they're going to be out here. The man is going to burn tonight, so there will be uh, a burn tonight. So they will continue to have fun, Jim. All right, uh, Camila Bernal, and we saw that tow truck going behind you just a few moments ago. I suspect there'll be some tow trucks that are busy over the next day or two. Uh, Camila, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yes. Uh, joining Absolutely. us now is Andrew Hyde. He is one of the thousands of festival goers uh, stuck at Burning Man. Um, Andrew, I, I guess, is that a fair way of putting it? You're stuck right now? W what's going on? What can you tell us? I mean, we're stuck and then we can't move, but we also were planning on being here for a couple of days, so we're here. We're enjoying it, and uh, yeah, the rain has definitely put a damper on it, but we're in an extreme environment, and we're prepared for that and enjoying it. Um, and Andrew, I guess, take us back to when this all got started. What happened? How bad did it get? 
Uh, were there folks who were not prepared, who got sort of caught in the middle of it? Uh, and why did so many people leave? There were, there were so many folks who uh, packed up and left, um, and they didn't uh, stick it out like you are. Um, take us back. Tell us, uh, tell us about uh, everything that's taken place over the last day or two. Yeah, I mean, the scheduled ending of the festival is tomorrow. So a lot of people that are leaving early, that's a normal, normal activity um, for the burn. Generally, the burn is on Saturday night and Sunday the temple burn. So the people leaving early happens every year. Um, it's not it's not something that is abnormal. Um, rain started on Friday night. It was supposed to be 30 minutes. And it lasted about six hours, a uh, pretty big amount. Um, and it made this beautiful pie that we have here, which is usually dust in this very fine, um, very dry environment, very muddy and very wet. And it made it so even walking 100 yards was almost impossible. So for a couple hours there, you were absolutely stuck wherever you were at. If you were out on a walk or an adventure, you lived there for a little bit until you could safely get back. Um, and, and people have started to kind of test the waters and see if their uh, vehicles can make the roadways. And people are making it out. Some people are walking out. Um, but people are kind of getting back to their normal lives. Yeah, and we talked to uh, one woman earlier on uh, in this program, and she showed us the bottom of her shoes, uh, you know, in the middle of the live shot. And I thought it was it was pretty uh, illustrative of what you guys have been dealing with. She had like two or three inches of mud just uh, caked onto the bottom of her shoes. Is that what it's been like trying to get around? Yeah, I mean, if it's a traffic spot where a car has been, it's, it's water, it's mud. If it's... Yeah some place that hasn't been used it's some place you can walk for miles i think i walked five or six miles today with no issue um but when the rain hits it becomes slop you know slippery sloppy you can't move anywhere and we i think we might have missed it andrew we missed you holding up your shoe how do you, how do your shoes look try that again they're, they're pretty good they're pretty good let's, let's try this out there we go. oh yeah definitely That's not a bad look yeah yeah you'll be throwing so, those out or weighing on to pounds them? now I'll hang on to them. I like these ones. <laughs> and it sounds like you're a, a pro at this or a veteran at this. You've done this uh, Burning Man Festival before. Um, I, I, yeah. Or maybe you've talked to other uh, folks who've been here before. Uh, is it really that unusual to see this much rain coming in? And uh, not to put you on the spot too much, is this something that festival organizers might have to be prepared for next year uh that might be they might need to be better prepared for next year yeah i think about every 20 years this is going to happen out here in the desert um i think the borg has been really prepared for it i mean they've been really communicative um you know all the porta potties got service last night like it's not really not a, a life and death situation it's a bunch of people that abide by the 10 principles of burning man a bunch of which is being a radically self-reliant so um, you know, I, I come out here every year. I love it. It's this lovely arts festival in the middle of a barren wasteland and beauty because of that, the duality of life and the duality of the arts and the, the culture and just kind of this place that's really far from a lot of things um, and, and making a city and calling it home. So I'm very well prepared, but almost everybody here is very well prepared. Um, and the people that are doing it right are really relaxed right now. And the people that are doing it wrong are really kind of scrambling and having to... Uh, Try to make friends and, uh, you know, to make sure they have enough food and water for the next couple of days. Um, but, yeah, we, you know, we're burners. We're pretty tough. We're pretty prepared. Yeah, we saw the video of Chris Rock and, and Diplo. I don't know if you saw this or if you checked this out, but apparently Chris <laughs> Rock had we to, all saw that one. Yeah, they had to <laughs> hitchhike their way out of there. Did you encounter uh, folks doing this kind of thing, try, just trying to get, get out of Dodge? <laughs> yeah, well, it, it gets better. They walked out of it. They walked out of the festival, so they, they in the mud five miles. They walked, and then they got into a back of a pickup truck of one of Diplo's supporters and got into town that way, which many people are choosing to do. You know, I, I met one gentleman yesterday who's a surgeon and just had to get back to the hospital, so he decided to put on his shoes, get all of his stuff in a safe place where he knew he was going to get out of here because this is a leave no trace event. So all of our stuff that we bring in, we have to take out. So it's not like you can just abandon it. Um, so you got to take care of those logistics and take care of, of your friends and family here. Make sure you don't burden them with the, the work that you were supposed to do as part of your camp or part of your, your setup here. Um, but yeah, we saw them get out. I thought that was amazing. I thought that was hilarious. It was under a shelter in place. So it's a little bit of a, you know, was that tasteful or not? That, that can be a conversation that we'll have out here. And um, But I think that they made the best choice with the, you know, whatever information they had. And 
maybe they had to be someplace. I respect them for it. That sounds like a very, very tough slog through the mud. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, Andrew, I, uh, you stay safe. Uh, get home safe. Thanks very much for your time. We appreciate it. Hey, thank you. Cheers.